Hi, Jay Smith from Model Aviation Magazine and Park Pilot Magazine. I'm at the Detroit Maker Fair. We're currently inside the Henry Ford, and I'm here with Kurt and Casey and this beautiful R2 unit in front of me that they built. And as you can see, they're holding a Tata radio, so we're going to ask them a little bit about the R2 unit and what went into making it RC. Hi, Kurt. Hi, how you doing? Good. So tell me a little bit about the unit. Well, it's been a joint project. Uh, we finished it up about three years ago. Uh, we, we pressed the uh, Futaba radio into service. We needed uh, at least five channels to make this thing go, and uh, that's what we use on this one. Some of the guys use up to 12 channels, but uh, this one here, uh, we have it. We take it out in public. We go to the maker's fairs. We go to the comic cons, and it's one that we put out into the public where kids can touch it and feel it and get their pictures taken with it. Casey, I saw you uh, yesterday interacting with the public, and you were hiding the radio. Tell me a little bit about why you do that. I keep the radio behind me to keep the magic there. Kids actually think R2-D2 is a living, breathing thing, and they think he's his own character. So hiding the radio, it just keeps the magic alive. Okay. So how long did it take you to build? How many hours do you think are in it? <laughs> I have no idea how many hours we have in it. But uh, we did about three months of research, uh, made sure we had the dimensions right. The blueprints are available online. Uh, we belong to a club called the R2-D2 Builders Club, and it's free to join. Anyone can join. The website is astromech.net, and um, there's guys on there that can help you put things together. Uh, there's guys that have put many, many thousands of dollars into it. Uh, we consider this one kind of a budget R2. It's one that we get out there so that the kids can play with it and, uh, and not worry too much if they break it. So beyond controlling it with the radio, what actually powers it? What, what kind of motor system do you have and battery system? Well, that's one thing where uh, there's a lot of variety in the club. Um, you can use anything you want to power it. What we decided to do is we used a lot of off-the-shelf stuff. We used uh, Power Wheels batteries, which are made to be charged and discharged a lot. We used uh, Razor scooter motors in the feet to make it go. And uh, a lot of the stuff we use um, is just off-the-shelf stuff, like grabbing an airplane uh, uh, radio like this, you know, allowed us to take advantage of this proven technology and adapt it to what we use it for. Are you also using servos inside R2? The, the same type of uh, airplane servos that uh, your guys use. Um, we have them here running the front utility arms uh, inside of them. Uh, we use a motor controller on the uh, feet motors. Then we have another motor controller for the dome rotation. And uh, we use another Power Wheels uh, gearbox and motor to do the internal uh, spinning of the dome. A lot of the guys use uh, windshield wiper motors out of cars or different types of things. They rub wheels against the edge. They use a uh, uh, lazy Susan bearing to do the ro dome rotation. Um, ours is a little different. So uh, obviously, as you said, it, it does some movement, it does some talk. Can you give us just a, a real brief demo of some of the things that it'll do? Yeah, he moves forward and backwards. Uh, it goes left and right. And uh, the dome is a, uh, like I said, Casey's a better driver than I am. but. Uh, uh, the dome rotates. We get the uh, arm movement out here. The kids kind of love to wave at uh, R2, and R2 loves to wave at the kids. Uh, the kids uh, recognize him, and it's just one of those things um, where you have this, uh, like a movie icon, and uh, if you're able to reproduce it in a model accurately, you get it out in the public, and people just react to it. It's crazy. Can you give us a sound bite? Oh, sure. Yeah, we have a, a little transmitter that we use. It's a 12-channel transmitter that... Uh, it just, once you, do, once you do a sound like that and you couple it to some action, uh, the kids really like it. So it, there's a variety of uh, different things that he can do. We do hospital visits. We have some quieter sounds that we use when we're in hospital rooms, things like that. But uh, he's uh, pretty adaptive. We also have on the remote, uh, your viewers may have seen, is uh, a uh, portable phone. That's just connected to a Bluetooth speaker. We have a, a program that we use, and it has all the sounds in it, and we can connect that to a Bluetooth speaker and play sounds through it that way also. Oh, okay. So that's what this is. So can you give us a peek inside the dome so we can see what he's made of? Yeah, yeah no problem. You got it? You got it? We use, a, we use a battery pack of uh, four AA batteries. It'll power about 300 LEDs in here for about 18 hours. And you probably see it looks like a little patchwork quilt in here. 
We use uh, Gorilla Tape, and this Gorilla Tape is three years old, but we use Gorilla Tape and it stays adhesive to mount our items in our dome because when kids push on them or when it falls over, if a kid knocks it over, these push in and it doesn't damage the unit. So it's, it's not that we were too lazy to bolt them in. We kind of designed this so that it can be repaired. There's Velcro here holding in our, our circuit board with our Arduino on it here. And our, our, we have a little Arduino that's programmed that gives us that random uh, light pattern. It actually mimics the ones that are in the movie, the same pattern. So we have the, uh, the front LEDs, the dome here, uh, but that's all run off those AA batteries. Inside the um, unit itself, we've got the power wheels uh, motor and gearbox motor right in the center. And we've, we've kept this really simple. It's not, it, it's, it's not like this huge complex uh, piece of computer equipment like some of the guys are. We've tried to keep it simple. You can see the two servos right here in front that uh, run the arms. And then uh, below that, or in the back, uh, we've, got, uh, where we've got two switches where we can disconnect the motors. So if we have to leave it for a period of time, we can turn the motors off and still use the radio to run everything else. There are three other switches, and those are uh, connected directly to the batteries. So we can either disconnect the battery, we can connect the battery, flipping the switches one way to our, um, what we use here, our electronics and our motors, or we can flip them the other way and connect them to the chargers. And we've put our chargers right on board plugged into a plug strip so at night we turn off the motors we flip the switches to charge position we plug the thing in the wall and we walk away and then the next morning it's charged and ready to go. Casey I noticed you're using paper clips as your push rods on the servos can you tell me why that is? We keep paper clips on the servos because kids really like to pull on his arms. Something sticks out, they got to pull onto it. The paper clips just bend, so we can stick our hands in there, bend it back, and nothing much is ruined. And Kurt, what is the runtime you get with R2? Well, with the uh, batteries, with the Power Wheels batteries, uh, we have two in series that give us 24 volts to the feet, and the other one is wired separately to run everything else, the receivers and the uh, MP3 player, the amplifiers. But it'll run for eight hours nonstop. Well, it's a very impressive unit, and we appreciate both of you taking the time to talk to us about it and obviously bringing it out here to the Maker Fair. Sure, no problem. Thank you. It's our pleasure.